there are ways for you to kind of gain confidence and keep the momentum so that you kind of have markers for yourself and can get to a point where you can be totally naked, lights on, after a long day and no shower and just, <laughs> you know, fuck the shit out of somebody. Welcome to Honey Do Me, a podcast that goes into the bedroom and beyond. Hosted by Emma Norman and Cass Anderson. Here at Honey Do Me, we don't have all the answers. So we chat with experts, educators, and badass change makers to get them. We are here to remind our listeners and ourselves that what we're going through is normal. That we are worthy of love and pleasure. And that we are all in this together. So tell us, honey, how do you do you? Hello. Hello. <laughs> a little loud. A little, little loud. loud a little we get proud. loud on Wednesdays. <laughs> That's what we do. That's Let's what Wednesdays are for. And washing dishes and cutting off your finger. Wet wild Wednesday. Is that why you're holding a napkin? Yeah. I thought it was your security napkin or something. It's <laughs> it's not. It's not emotional support. Oh. I was washing dishes too aggressively and it just And you don't have anything. I've been going different. through band-aids all day. Oh, I'll send you home with some. Thank you. You're welcome. So I hope Ugh, everyone how else deep is... is it? I mean, <laughs> it was pretty gross. Ugh. I know. Do you need stitches? Yes. I'm going right now. No, I'm not. Oh. I'll be fine. It's like, <laughs> I guess that's not really a joke. First. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be here for everyone. For you. <laughs> this is for you. It is for our, our fans. listeners. <laughs> our fans. I would die for you. <laughs> I would lose my pointer finger for you. And that's an important one. I point. I say, come here, you. <laughs> that's the come hither motion. <laughs> so it's really important that I have mm-hmm. this guy. Thankfully, it's on my non-dominant hand. But it's still important. Oh, my no, God. It's not. My right <laughs> that is your right hand. She's woozy, people. I'm... She's woozy. She's losing why it. Why is that? that was, why do I not know my left and my right? I don't know. That was terrifying. Because it's your pointer, so you can't make the backwards L. So yeah. you don't know. So I literally have no idea. Oh, my God. Someone take me to the hospital <laughs> Thank God now. it's on my non-dominant hand. Is it? That's not true. You left-handed wily woman. <laughs> anyway, are you having a better day? <laughs> sure. 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 I am just getting ready for my newborn that will be here yes. next week. I'm getting a baby puppy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Currently pregnant with it right Currently now. Currently pregnant. Uh, <laughs> crowning. Crowning. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Not really. There'll be lots of pup talk, though, soon. A because different we're very mommy excited. birthed a di- this baby. Um, <laughs> but we're very excited to bring this little dude into our family. <laughs> Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. You know who I'm excited to bring into our family? Who? Today's guest. Yes. Oh my God. Today on the podcast, we have Ari Antwine. And holy shit, mm-hmm. this is a life changer. Like, not a game changer. This episode is a life changer. Mm. I think I could have called the episode at minute seven. Mm-hmm. I learned things. That I didn't even know. I learned things about my body that <laughs> my I body. just had yet to discover. Well, because we wanted to talk about how to become more confident being naked and being and being sex <laughs> and being in sex while naked. Is that how you want to say it? Yep, that's exactly how okay. I want to say it. I would say that that's what fair. we really wanted to learn was how to feel comfortable, confident, and sexy during sex. Yeah, because we get a lot of questions about how to hide certain body parts during sex. Um, and so we just wanted to know like what to say mm-hmm. in those scenarios because those are also questions that I've had. Mm-hmm. I also have a lot of insecurities during sex and can get out of my body and into my head, mm-hmm. which is not a place that I want to be when I'm trying to get it's all that pleasure. It's not the sexiest place that I spend my time. No, my head is not a very sexy place. <laughs> They say a woman's mind is her sexiest <laughs> feature. Not, Not mine. for me. <laughs> it's cluttered. It's messy. <laughs> she's stressy. It's not mm-hmm. fun. But she's I, a little sad. She's a little sad. She's anxious. <laughs> and she's insecure. Exactly. She's working on all of it. Mm-hmm. But she's just not there yet. But not quite 
there. Yeah, a lot of these questions have been coming up more and more for me recently, thinking about my body and feeling confident and sexy. Being naked with a new person. Potentially, yes. Potentially. <laughs> Maybe if Maybe. one day it presents itself after marriage. <laughs> after, <laughs> after marriage and we wait another year when I'm ready to have kids, then I'll get naked yes. with someone. <laughs> But I really, like, I hadn't thought about my body a lot like this in my relationship because you get really comfortable, you know? Totally. And so now that I'm not in one, like, all of these things are resurfacing again. And I think it was just a perfect time for me personally to have this conversation. Yes. And while I totally understand the idea that, like, you know, in relationships you get a lot more comfortable, but, I mean, I've been in mine for how many fucking years at this point? Mm Mm-hmm. 30. 30. Maybe. 37. to be exact Mm -hmm. four and a half Um, (laughs) and I still feel like I I have those insecurities come up like I wish that they had gone away completely but and I thought that they would I think that was like my idea in my head like oh once I find a partner then it's like those insecurities just go away but Mm -hmm. no finding the love of my life or one of the loves of my life (laughs) did not take Mm -hmm. away every one of my problems and every one of my insecurities and so yeah really happy to get some very like actionable tools Mm -hmm. on how to work through that this isn't just like a theoretical like just love yourself episode it's like it do this this and this and that's gonna make you feel better in the moment and Mm -hmm. also work towards that long term Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely couldn't have said it better myself so enjoy so So, (laughs) that's why i'm fucking not (laughs) so enjoy and we'll see you on the other side yes we will Hi, I'm Ari or Ariel. I'm a sex educator and a sexologist. So I'm someone who studies and interprets human sexuality um, based on a lot of like old research most of the time. So what I do with that um, these days is I turn it into content, uh, whether that be like on Instagram, how you'll find me on TikTok, Mm -hmm. which is strange because I don't do TikTok that often (laughs) (laughs) because I am old, but... (laughs) Not old, just old for TikTok. Yeah. Um, It's a very low threshold for TikTok, so. (laughs) Right? I'm not in my teens. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. (laughs) Right? I'm an old maid. Old maid. (laughs) Sue me. At 29. (laughs) Just wenches over um, here. (laughs) So I do uh, sex ed content usually from the lens of sensuality. So I try to do stuff that is... um, mainly outlining things for people uh, who are from the perspective of women or friends. And I, my audience is a lot of women who are questioning their sexuality, bisexual women, um, and queer women in general who want to learn more about women loving women, who want to learn more about their own bodies and how to help themselves orgasm. And I, in my client work, my one-on-one work that I serve with like private clients is more like, um, folks who are usually in a transition phase, like a lot of divorcees, a lot of people in, um, lackluster relationships, with men, women, anyone, right, Um, who are looking for a revival or a spark in their sex life, and usually they come to a sex coach, which I also do. Do a lot of stuff all over the place, but I like to call myself a sensual educator, so that's what I do. Well, I feel like (laughs) sensual educator, that is like, before I started this work, that was someone I was also searching for, because that is a whole side of myself that I feel like I've been really disconnected with for a long time. So putting that out there as your own work and finding people who really need you, I feel like that's such important work Mm -hmm. and people, we just need to know about it more. And Mm -hmm. so I I love hearing more and more educators that are coming out with this type of work. Yeah, I feel like, again, like as Emma was saying, before I started this work, I didn't really realize how many resources there are out there because I feel like when you think about like, oh, I need help, something isn't going right, you're like therapist, just like you're running the mill, you Mm -hmm. know mental health Mm -hmm. counselor and it's like I would go to a mental health counselor and they just wouldn't have the tools to help me with what I needed so or you didn't feel like you qualified for a sex therapist Mm because you're like oh that's not me I'm not middle-aged and need that you know like your preconceived notions of what a sex Mm -hmm. therapist would help you with um so yeah I agree with you yeah well correct me if I'm wrong but you also do burlesque is that right Did I see that right? Yes, I do. Can you tell us a little bit about what burlesque is? Because my only understanding of burlesque is a report I did in 
uh, high school because we got to choose what we wanted and I chose burlesque. Ooh, mm-hmm. um, they let you do that. They were disappointed. Mm. I will say that. Uh, it w- I did speech and debate in high school. I was very, very cool. Um, <laughs> and you had to make boards to go along with your speech. And I literally cut a Barbie mm. doll in half, put her front half. I glued her to the board and then I put a little bra top on her and then I pulled it off to show pasties. Oh my god! Um, and I did that in I front of that. a lot of people. I gave that speech in front of hundreds of people. Oh my um, gosh! And it was not received well, except for one man who loved it and said the only suggestion was add more sparkles. <laughs> so and so for the rest of your life, that's what you've done. And so I've been trying to live up to that my entire life. But anyways, back to you. Would you tell us a little bit about what burlesque means to you? Yeah, um, for me, burlesque is the art of theatrical striptease. So um, back in the day when burlesque was starting, um, you know, you would have just called it stripping um, because of the uh, kind of innuendos that it presented with nudity. And, you know, it usually is by textbook, um, a burlesque show would be like a comedy show or a variety show with things like magicians, comedians, um, vaudevillian performers, chorus line girls, and then they would have a burlesque performer kind of in between the acts. And slowly that started to build up into burlesque performers having their own acts, having their own big band behind them or their own show behind them, uh, traveling shows or tours in like, you know, 20s, 30s-esque. And then you have people like Josephine Baker who really like, you know, started this thing with (laughs) a black burlesque who is like a, she's just like a really huge icon of mine. Um, But burlesque is just theatrical striptease is, is what I would call it. A seasoned veteran performer has like two to three acts that they're known for where they uh, strip something off in like a subversive way that is um, not usual, that is kind of strange or like playing with nudity or tropes or society at large. You get a lot of like political burlesque especially in like the neo scene Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's just theatrical striptease and loving your body and making it okay to do that on a stage Mm -hmm. oh beautiful and so you said something that didn't feel like it could be the same you said like striptease Mm -hmm. And not taking yourself too seriously. And for me, I'm so uncomfortable (laughs) with my body that I can't take myself not that seriously if I'm naked. I'm like, call me sexy and tell me it right now. Like, I can't not (laughs) take myself seriously. So how do you Mm -hmm. do that? Is that like a lot of body confidence? Is that a lot of self-confidence? Like, how do you have, how can you not take yourself seriously when you're strip teasing? Hmm. I would say that you can't take it seriously in that... Um, it's not really about other people's opinions of you or society's opinions of you. It's like what you think of yourself personified, right? So like you're saying, the voice in the back of your head, when you strip down is saying like, oh, I need to be glorified. I need to be applauded for my bravery and for being (laughs) like half naked, nearly naked in front of people. And you should, and that's great. But the way you kind of get over that is that you have to command and demand that confidence from your audience, no matter what you're doing. If you're doing something silly, you have to commit to it. If you're slipping on your dress that is a size too big, you have to commit to it. Like the goal is to entertain your audience and to have it be like a reciprocal thing. So you have to give the audience something and you have to get something from them. But often you have to tell them what is sexy for you. It's not the audience kind of placing what is sexy on you. You're really there for yourself. How do you I don't start- know if that answers your question. <laughs> it answered it tenfold. So that was a beautiful <laughs> response. Absolutely. How do you start to bring in that same sort of idea or vibe into like a one-on-one situation or in the bedroom? Like, is it the same sort of thing mm-hmm. or like, I think that's, you know, not all of us are going to be on a stage with a lot of people. So with that one member of the audience that you have in front of you in your bedroom, (laughs) like how do you bring in those same tools? I say 
pick something that you know you're the shit at that like no one can tell you that like you are bad at and you know I don't know if it could be like cooking if you're the best cook or baker just take that same confidence and kind of switch it and just take that into the bedroom easier said than done but you know if you were in some sort of space where society at large was telling you and let's use the the cooking example right like if you knew that you've been cooking for x amount of time and you're great at and your food tastes great and everyone loves it and you know you've been through the trial and error of you know however many recipes to get to where you are um like you know you're you're proven in your craft, right? So nobody can tell you that you're terrible at it or that you need work on it. Um, And if they do, it should be constructive criticism, right? Mm -hmm. So same thing with sexuality. You kind of have to fake it until you make it in, in some sense, but also you have to be able to stand confidently and firmly in what you want and an experience that you can create for people in the same way that you would confidently in other spaces in your life. So if society at large is telling you, no, you're a shitty baker, I don't like this, or you need to do this my way, you need to tell them, (laughs) like, hey, I know what I want, I know what I like, I know what my body wants, or what my audience wants, or what my people who are consuming whatever I'm giving them wants, like, no, you have to stand up for this. So Mm -hmm. that applies usually in some respect to, you know, the clients that I work with usually. So if they can't get on the burlesque train, I'm usually like, okay, like, how are you in the boardroom? Like, how are you at your job? Like, how are you as a mother with your children or something? Like, what is something that you have, um, you know, substantiated confidence in that nobody can take away? Like, let's tweak that and let's find the ebb and flow and make sure that you can, kind of relay this into a space where it lends itself to your sexuality. Mm -hmm. It's really not that far off. It's part of you. Right. I love that. I feel like that's such a good embodiment practice. Like, you know, really thinking about what does that confidence feel like in this other situation and then like really feeling it in your body. Like what is that sensation and then taking it Mm -hmm. into this other scenario and Mm -hmm. accessing it there. I love that. Mm -hmm. That was some of the best advice I feel like I've ever heard about body confidence. And it also feels like it it should come with a lot of self-awareness. Like when you're talking about knowing what you're good at and bringing that confidence into the bedroom and you know, not letting anyone take away that identity from you. And so is your self-awareness, is that something you feel like you've always had or was that something you had to grow into before or during your burlesque career? Like how does that, what's that journey like for you? Oh, absolutely. It was not something I've always had. Never. (laughs) No, 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 no. It was a very awkward, shy kid, very quiet, um, I couldn't have even dreamed of being the person that I am today. The things that helped me personally were um, I got a yoga certification when I was in my early 20s. Like So from like 20 to 21-ish, I was doing a yoga certification. So that really helped me appreciate my body for what it did. But I kind of grew my body confidence with um, my body awareness with yoga And then, you know, mid-college into like mid-20s, so like early 20s for me to mid-20s was just more of discovering my queer side, my bisexuality, being more comfortable with that, exploring like less shame with that. Um, Even if there were was like a lack of experiences, it was just kind of like me leaning into those identities a little bit more and giving myself some room to breathe in that aspect and not being confined to um, straightness and the straight sex I was having not being fulfilling. And it was like, oh, okay, well, you're kind of gay. So that's why. <laughs> so, number one. Number one. Don't like dick that much. So. <laughs> yeah. So I started doing like showgirl stuff, I'll say. So I started burlesque as like a chorus line dancer with a production company in Dallas, Texas. And I was 21, so, like, very, very fresh, had just, like, a few sexual experiences to, like, 
create this persona of like, oh, I'm so sexy dancing on stage. Mm-hmm. Yes. So like nothing really to draw from, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where I say like, you know, faking it until you make it. It's like really, really helped me. As some, with some things you shouldn't fake, like your orgasms. And right. whatnot. But like, you know, getting into that, creating this character, or this entity I could kind of lean into and be my most sensual sexual self mm-hmm. in an elevated space on a stage for people to consume kind of helped me be that in other places kind of grew into this person who like really accepted their sensuality and got to a platform to express that and not everybody gets that platform and not everybody you know sees themselves on that stage especially as a queer black woman Mm -hmm. (laughs) so with like I usually have big curly hair and like I don't wear like wigs or anything so it's just like very very not the nuanced, sultry, like cutesy 24 inch waist pinup that you're used to seeing in this like very retro vibe Mm -hmm. space that is burlesque Mm -hmm. really. And I think that, you know, I love it because of that, because I get to kind of like be the person that I need to be for myself. And I get to be the person that I can be for other people. Mm -hmm. I love that. That is so beautiful. Thank you for sharing all Mm -hmm. of that with us. I think that (laughs) just casually amazing. I think I've always struggled with the idea of fake it till you make it because I'm like, I don't even know how to fake it. But I think something I've been learning lately is that you know, these pictures I have of myself or this idea of like, oh, I wish I could be this person or I really like this aspect of myself or the person I am when I'm like, you know, a little drunk, like even Mm -hmm. that sort of idea. It's like (laughs) because I am able to like see those people, want those people, like they are a part of me. And so I can access them like I already am Mm -hmm. that person as well. And so I love that kind of picture of fake it till you make it. I feel like that. I don't know. It feels a lot more authentic even though I just said the word fake, but I feel like it's a really authentic way to fake it till you Mm -hmm. make it because it's still just being yourself. Yeah. That's beautiful. I like Mm -hmm. that. And so you said you got kind of a spoiled experience being able to kind of explore yourself and grow in front of this audience that's mostly there to cheer you on and like support you. (laughs) So if you're not (laughs) and you're still struggling through that like self-acceptance and knowing who you are, and you're exploring sex, how, like, our first question is, like, hiding body parts during sex. And so how do we kind of work through little things like that where we're like, I know I'm better than this. Like, I know I'm better than, like, trying to hide this little tummy roll, but I'm not right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And so how do we kind of fake that confidence? Mm, That's a good question. Let me think back to the last time I had sex. Um, (laughs) It's been a while for me, too. It's been a while. Yes. She's rusty. She's rusty. (laughs) I mean, you would start off small just because you don't want to, uh, I would say, like, reshame yourself or put yourself in a situation where you could be shamed. Hopefully, you're doing these things with partners who care about you or that you like and who like you. Um, I've definitely been in situations where, you know, I just won't do or say things anymore because one person said one thing and it fucked me up, Mm -hmm. Um, which is still things that I need to work on. Right. Mm -hmm. But as far as accessing, you know, that confidence from within yourself, I would say um, if you're trying to hide a body part during sex, it depends on the body part, but usually you can do some great things with lighting. And I'm a big advocate for everyone, you know, if you have visibility access, use it, right? Because like feeling around fumbling in the dark, it just feels very, uh, for lack of a better word, like infantile. Mm-hmm. To me. Like I'm right. just like, I need to see what's fucking going on down yeah. there. <laughs> like, and you need to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. So um, I think my suggestion with that would be if you're not like a light's on totally per- like totally lights on person try with like a subtle light or um like colored lights are really nice and can create some nice ambiance purples reds things like that um no yellows no one looks good in yellow light <laughs> don't do that Look, have you jaundice right yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. a little jaundice a, a little jaundice <laughs> like guess it depends on what you're going for i know i guess <laughs> 
Yeah. And you can always like leave something on that makes you feel comfortable, whether like I'm a big high waisted underwear fan and like, you know, I will never have abs for the life of me, no matter how hard I work. So that's something I get self-conscious about and I'm not self-conscious about it until I'm in the moment. I'm like, Oh, mm-hmm. don't touch my stomach or yep. like, oh, like I have an aversion to this and I didn't know. Now I have to like get back into the mode of being sexy and yes. sexualized by this person. Right. Um, what I like to do is like, just kind of command attention and be like, Hey, can we like leave these on and like make it, you know, like a game or something Mm -hmm. around that also blindfold people. (laughs) Yes. I've heard that a couple times now. And I feel like that's the hidden trick that everyone Mm -hmm. should have in sex. (laughs) Just It's it's really fun, especially if, well, it should be consensual. (laughs) (laughs) Especially if it's consensual, Uh, it's really fun. (laughs) But if someone like, isn't quite expecting it, like I am a really big fan of, um, how did I first blindfold someone? It was not expected. I think they found my sleeping mask and I was like, and they were like playing around with it. And I was like, keep that on. And they're like, Oh, (laughs) Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can do things. You can like tie scarves around the eyes. You can, you know, have people cover their eyes, no peeking. There are a few things you can do if you, um, you know, don't want to expressly be like, I'm self-conscious about this. Don't touch this area or like, I'm not into it. Cause that creates a, like a barrier for people essentially. And like, if people see that you are self-conscious during a sexual act usually they'll be self-conscious about it like Mm -hmm. think about situations where someone said or did something like that to you and you're like oh god I can't touch that now like what what do I do Mm -hmm. so just create an inviting environment for yourself and kind of think think about it like okay what would I want to hear if partner were telling me this right now um, in a situation if it's something that they don't like or that they're uncomfortable with like of course communication is great it should happen before it doesn't always, but, you know, set up those boundaries before. And if you want to be a little bit more nuanced with it, there are like tricks and things like the things we went over before that you can do. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, like I am a big fan of like what helped me become more confident was seeing my body and like boudoir photography mm-hmm. was really, really healing for me. And it still is. And as my body changes and has changed and like ebbed and flowed over the past 10 years that I've been doing burlesque, like, you know, some of my costumes don't fit anymore. It's like some of like the lingerie started, I started doing this when I was 21. I'm going to be 30. Mm -hmm. (laughs) My body has changed and it's going to, but just the fact that I can still feel confident in my skin and I can exude that in a still photo is really, really great. And it's, if you have, you know, like, access to a boudoir photographer and if you have the means I definitely think it's a good investment for like a birthday thing for yourself no one else has to see it you don't have to put it on any social media or anything it can just be for you right or what you can do is you know have your partner do it if you're comfortable with that you know try to think about how not how you see yourself but how others can see you and it can really flip that paradigm for you um And, you know, they're professionals. If you get a professional photographer, that's their job. Good Mm -hmm. lighting, Mm -hmm. good angles, all the beauty. Um, And of course, if you don't have the means to do that, that's totally fine. Start taking more nudes. (laughs) Just start taking Mm -hmm. more nudes. Get your lighting on, get your angles on. There are a few people who take really great nudes that are just more like body positive on the internet and on Instagram and everything. So you can take a class on taking nudes. I thought about teaching a class on taking better totally nudes. Totally should. Like, you t- please, do. <laughs> please do. Please do. We'll like, both I'm take there. it. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, oh, yes, you should. <laughs> yeah, because I think nudes are a love language. And it's just you have to – you're not going to get more comfortable doing something by not doing that thing. Mm-hmm. I will say. So you don't have to dive into the deep end with any of that, but there are ways kind of to skirt around what you want from an experience and to still gain traction in that area and say like, Hey, good job. I didn't like show my tummy this time, but like, you know, I rolled my underwear down a little bit and then I rolled them <laughs> back up and that's fine for me. Mm-hmm. Like everybody has something that they're self-conscious about and you mm-hmm. don't have to be explicit about it with your partner. If you don't want to, if, if, if 
not ready, but there are ways for you to kind of gain confidence and keep the momentum so that you kind of have markers for yourself and can get to a point where you can be totally naked, lights on after a long day and no shower and just, (laughs) you know, fuck the shit out of somebody. Yes. If I can do it, you can do it. That's the end goal. Everything. I love a (laughs) step by step Mm -hmm. uh, process for things. I love taking things that way. But that really brought up two things for me. The first thing is I love the idea of not having to be like 100% okay right now because I feel like there's always pressure on either side. Like when you're not feeling confident, there's pressure to look a certain way. But then when you're like, no, I'm giving that up. But then there's pressure to feel 100% confident all of the time and you can't not like any part of your body. And I feel like that's so unrealistic for where most people are at. So I love the idea of like Mm -hmm. working with the lighting, working with what you're wearing. I feel Mm -hmm. like that just makes it so much more approachable. And I am wondering, because you mentioned like that moment when you are being intimate with someone and then they like touch a certain part of your body and you're like, oh, don't touch there. Like if that, if you're in that moment, like what is something that you can do to like get back into where you want to be as opposed to then spiraling and being like, oh my God, my body, my body, my body. That's a good question because everyone is different, but I feel like the response is pretty similar for most people. And I'll say that in my work, a lot of the time, it's a trauma response. Mm -hmm. Like we store trauma in our body. So whether we know it or not, if someone even lovingly strokes a part of us that has been, you know, unlovingly stroked before, it can elicit a response that startles us or that is um, upsetting sometimes, right? So I think recognizing that is the first step. And then um, using whatever tools you have access to, if that is stopping and saying, no, partner, we need to stop. (laughs) I need to take a step back. Like, do that. You do not have to keep going if you have been, like, triggered in any sort of mild way. Um, especially if that's going to be like playing in the back of your mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so on another level, if it is sim, if it is just like a body confidence thing, if it is not like a trauma response thing, um, that you know of, or are conscious of, um, you can kind of do this thing that is pretty well known in the yoga community. It's like a sensation, um, meditation, which it might take a little, <laughs> a little adjusting to do it like while you're in the moment. Cause the idea is to like be with this person or people, right. And to, you know, have this sensual experience while you're there. But you know, if you're in this place where you're feeling self-conscious, that can be really difficult. So putting another thing on your plate might not help, but what you can try to do in like a minute's time is, you know, it's, you know, the five senses. So it's saying like, okay, what are five things you can see? What are four things you can hear? Uh, Three things you can taste, uh, two things you can smell, and one thing you can feel, right? So just focusing on that, five, four, three, two, one, you can count that down. And that will usually ground you and take you more so into the moment. And I'd say, if you don't have access to that, Um, just kind of, you'd have to lean into that space of confidence where you say like, okay, um, I'm not feeling my sexiest right now, but like, what part of me does feel confident? What part of me does feel sexy? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, this person is here with me and they're vibing with me, like, check mm-hmm. right <laughs> like they could have walked out they could have walked away mm-hmm. a long time ago <laughs> if they really didn't want to like mm-hmm. just check in with yourself do what you need to do to center yourself and if that's walking away from the situation getting a cup of water going to the bathroom and saying like i'm a fucking sexy ass bitch uh taking a nude in the bathroom or whatever <laughs> walking back in and being like yeah let's do this now. Yes. And I was going to ask if you had any like sayings or anything of what you could like tell yourself instead, but um, mm. I'm a hot ass bitch. That works too. That'll work too. <laughs> that <Yeah>. works. <laughs> or sexy ass bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Whichever one. Whichever one. Yeah. I really like the five, four, three, two, one suggestion as well, because I just got out of like a three year long relationship. And so I s- kind of stopped thinking about my body during sex. Like that wasn't the main priority anymore because you got comfortable with someone. And so now that I'm not in a relationship and I'm thinking about, 
you know, my next partner, I've never thought about my body more than like these past couple months, you know, and like what I look like. Exactly. Because it's like, Mm. it's a whole new experience, a whole new ball game (laughs) because you're like, oh my God, it's a whole Mm. other person that I don't know how they think. But like, I know that doesn't matter. But so in the moment, I know that I'm probably going to spiral at some points when one thing like I'm not, I know I'm not in the sexiest of position or whatever, you know? And so regrounding yourself and like counting down, taking a moment, I feel like that's a really good tool that'll help forever. Because even when I was with my partner and we were talking about sex, our mind trailing was always something that came up as well. So using it for almost any circumstance, I feel like is such a good tool to have in your tool belt, your sexual tool your belt. Sexual tool belt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just keep those, keep those somatics in mind, bring it back to your body, back to what you're feeling. And if you have you know, a bad feeling, what would help you compensate, compensate for that in a good way? You know, what makes you feel twice as good? Maybe it's mm-hmm. somebody going down on you. Maybe it's you going down on someone who knows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's also with the information that you gave in the very beginning of you like own mm-hmm. it and you like, no, I am this, like, this is sexy. And that's what you're going to see because that's who I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, fuck mm-hmm. everything else because I know I'm sexy. So that's, that's what the audience is going to believe. And that's mm-hmm. By audience, I mean the one other person in the room. <laughs> I remember I um, got a little too drunk in high school once, and uh, I shouldn't have been drinking at all, whatever. <laughs> if yeah. any high schoolers are listening, which you probably shouldn't I drank the most in high school. <laughs> I drank Honestly. less now than I did in high school. <laughs> I had 15 shots. It was a lot. I, I could never Oof. do that now. I can't have two now. <laughs> Anyways, that's not the point of my story. The point of my story is I was dancing a ton, and I'm not really a dancer. Um And I was dancing in front of this one guy in particular, just like he was my friend. It was just fun. (laughs) And then the next day Mm. I remembered and I was like, oh, my God, was I like terrible? And he was like, no, I could tell that you thought you were amazing. And so you looked amazing. (laughs) And I was like, "Okay." And that really stuck with me. Yeah. So thank (laughs) you. (laughs) Yeah. Any situation, just apply it. Just (laughs) apply it. You think you're good at it. Exactly. (laughs) There are certain things like. You should take out a grain of salt. <laughs> yes. <for it. laughs> Absolutely. If it involves if like another person, like, oh, yeah. Please stop. You know, oh no, I'm so great at this. No, right? I'm fabulous. <laughs> I won't stop. I can't. I'm sorry, I'm a superstar. Yeah. Superstars don't stop for anyone. <laughs> yeah. And so I feel like also with your background, you'd have a lot of great advice on like how to take off your clothes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so because I'm not oh, someone yeah. that's a that's a classy bitch when I take shit off it gets clunky it gets caught on my ponytail I'm sweaty I look like I've been in the mines (laughs) I've for eight hours trying to get things off and you know I'll trip over my underwear that's stuck Mm -hmm. in my pants and anyway so what are some good tips for like taking it off Ooh, good question because there's taking off like a burlesque costumes and things like that that are made to be taken off right there's zippers and closures in certain places uh, that come off in certain ways that are supposed to dazzle you. And then there's, you know, taking off like civilian bras and pants. Like jeans. Are, what about you know, jeans? Still made yeah. <laughs> in strange ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Not know, easy jeans access. Jeans are too tight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you take off um, tight jeans in yeah. a sexy way? Yeah. Is it possible? <laughs> Is it possible? I, I'm a really big fan of having someone take it off for you. Okay. Honestly. That feels like the best answer. (laughs) That way you make it kind of fun and playful. And it's just kind of like, well, if you want this, you have to come get it. Um, And then they kind of know uh, the, uh, (laughs) like what it takes. (laughs) (laughs) They know the struggle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got to know it's there. I'm also a big fan of like being like, no, 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 you wait here. I'm going to go to the bathroom, you know, get ready. I don't even look in the mirror sometimes when I do it because it'll like psych me out. And I'm just like, oh, my God, my makeup's running or like whatever. Right. But what I do do if I like, you know, take a little break, tell them to get themselves prepared and go to a different space, then, you know, like I'll, you know, do some body confidence things like tell myself like, okay, you're about to to get fucked like, the <laughs> mindset right yes. um and then you just like strip down to whatever you feel confident in which is you know could still be pants on or whatever uh could be like bra off and then you know you could just we already have style. something <laughs> off in a way uh-huh. like already have the bra unhooked mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah like, walk in. Mm-hmm. 
I'm a big fan of that. Just I, to this day, I cannot a, a cis man who can take a bra off easily has been so hard to find. You I don't know what between. it is. Hey, diamond doesn't. doesn't. No, <laughs> I don't know what's complicated diamond in the about road. it. It seems <laughs> like you just use basic knowledge of a clasp. And you just, but it, and that is so unattractive when they can't. Do oh, basic things. Yes. I'm like, you are going to ruin this whole night because you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be upsetting for me. <laughs> so, yeah, I would yeah. much rather just take off my own bra. When they, mm-hmm. right when they go for it, I'm like, I got it. <laughs> I don't want you to ruin this. Just let me, we'll pause this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is expensive. This is, yeah. I'm a big fan of the like wrapping around and taking it off. But of course, if you need help with that or if you want help, you can always turn around and be like, can you? Mm-hmm. hopefully they they know what they're doing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. those are great suggestions I love that and something that came up yeah. as well is you said go to the bathroom and like wait one second so is that also a good time to put on lingerie so like say you've been out for the whole day and you know you want to come home and have sex should you be wearing your lingerie all day should you come home and change right before like I don't know the timing of lingerie I'm out of the game. Yeah, that is, I don't either because I feel like, dude, every time I have tried this, whether I'm wearing it all day or whether I take a break, uh, like have a shower and then put it on, shower, shave, do the whole thing, mm-hmm. put it on, that shit never stays on. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> they don't even get to see it. I think it's happened twice to where the person wasn't expecting it and then I like walked out and whatever and they were like oh oh this is happening oh, <laughs> like, fuck. They really just weren't even expecting sex and it was just like oh okay. it's just Tuesday <laughs> and I like, walk out surprise. with laundry <laughs> yeah so I have done the latter more than the wearing it all day mm-hmm. um laundry is uh, I'm gonna be honest it's usually very uncomfortable mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not meant to be worn all day and if you do wear it all day. Usually it's something that you don't wear with clothes because it like rubs or right, has certain right. closures and clasps and things like it's meant to be worn. Most lingerie, I will say is meant to be worn, you know, with the aesthetic in mind, not like comfort under clothing. Mm-hmm. So I'm a big fan of being like, no, 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 wait here. I have something for you. Let me put this on. Let me put on a stocking. If you're into that, um, let me put on whatever you're into, whether it's boots or you know, what have you. Mm -hmm. Um, I also have not gotten a lot of requests for lingerie, which makes me upset because I have so much that does not get used, (laughs) right? Um, But I am a big fan of if I am expecting something, but I want to be comfortable. um, I have started buying all the like monochrome underwear and like bras and panties. Mm -hmm. And a big thing for me is just like black underwear, black, black bra. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I know it's not sexy. It's not probably not what a, like a lot of people want to hear, but you know, it's better than like the nude stained bra <laughs> that you've been wearing, like, yes. you know, for the past yep. 10 years or whatever that doesn't fit right. Like mm-hmm. get a nice black bra, a nice black, whatever kind of top, a nice, you know, pair of black underwear that like is comfortable for you mm-hmm. and it'll look like it matches. Mm-hmm. It'll look like you tried and you really didn't because yeah. of my underwear is black (laughs) because of that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's such a good tip (laughs) because yeah, that's what kind of what I was worried about. I was like, like matching actually feels really good, you know? So I don't really Mm want to spend all my money on things that I'm going to wear for like 10 minutes, if that. And it's like, I would rather just get something that matches than I feel sexy in that. Mm -hmm. But also how do you come out? Um, That's Mm. another specific question. (laughs) How do you open the door and like stand? Because in my like sarcastic brain, in, in <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Honestly, one of my questions was, "How do you just move your body I during know. any of this?" Because because I would yeah. come out the door like this, but I'd start laughing and make it like a whole thing that's like not as sexy as like the money mm-hmm. I just spent to look sexy. So how do I yeah. take myself a little bit more seriously if I'm like coming out in lingerie? Hmm. I would say for anyone who is trying to like don the lingerie in that uh, like tropish way, I'll say it mm-hmm. never works out how you want it to or how the movies are. So just get that out of your head. <laughs> there will be laughter. There will be fumbles. Things might get caught on things. That's fine. So just, it's not going to be perfect. <laughs> it probably won't stay on very long unless you want it to, mm-hmm. unless you want them to work for it. Right. So 
what I usually do, and this is me in any situation, whether I'm just like fucking after all day or, you know, like wearing something for somebody or whatever, or like doing a scene or something, like I always put on music that makes me feel good. And then I'm like in the mood. So I have like so many sexy playlists, like so many. So (laughs) I usually cue those up with my person and I'm like, okay, like calm down. We're going to do this in a minute go to the bathroom or wherever could be like at their house or whatever, get into my mood and then, you know, take off whatever will make me feel comfortable and confident. And then I just kind of like walk in, like I am in a music video for lack of a better word. There's not like a, like one way I can give everyone that will work for everyone, but I just kind of enter the room. Like I am trying to set a mood for them. I'm not performing for them because then that's those stakes are way too high. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it Mm -hmm. makes it kind of weird. Right. But I just kind of feel like, you know, this is a vibe. I'm setting a vibe for them. I'm creating an experience. Like I want them to remember this. Like I want them to remember that they fucked me to this Kendrick Lamar (laughs) (laughs) fucking song. And they do. And they (laughs) do. I created that moment for them. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But music is really, really big for me. So I'd say whatever music you're into, like whatever you consider sexy, some people like think metal is really sexy, more power to you put on that metal and like, you know, just like enter the room. You don't have to like keep it on during sex or what have you, but if it makes you feel confident just put some music on, put some vibes on, get some good lighting going and don't go in there dry, you know, don't yes. like, mm-hmm. don't just, you know, expect the ambiance to be there without putting any effort into the ambiance. In, I mm-hmm. suppose. That yeah. makes so, Cause it'll yeah. take time to develop that confidence mm-hmm. to where you can just do it more or less in any situation. That Optimize so your sense. sexual space. Get the mm-hmm. dimmers. Get some surround sound speakers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So kind of making setting the ambiance effect. Like put on music. I'll be right back. Like less of a, so do you mm-hmm. want to put on music or should I? You mm-hmm. know, like right. that also starts to eat at my confidence. Like I don't know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So using that same tool that you said earlier of like, you know, you're going to do that and I'll be right back and make sure everything looks good, mm-hmm. you know? So it's kind of more of a, we're going to do this <laughs> type totally. of a thing. Confidence is sexy and taking control is sexy. So taking control of your body and of your environment and of the vibe, um, like in your hands is just, it's very, it's a very good place to start mm-hmm. at least. So any last things that we didn't hit on when it comes to like body confidence that you feel like would be important to bring up? Well, I'd say like if you are with a new partner or um, someone you're not used to having sex with or you're not used to each other's bodies and you're just kind of like, oh, we have chemistry, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> right? A good place for me to start usually, and I usually give this advice to clients is um, to be like, okay, like instead of saying like, what are your boundaries? Where are your yeses and nos? And like, which can be a pretty heavy conversation, but I think it's an important conversation to bring up, even if it is the first time or the first couple of times you're like, okay, so what are your pet peeves or what are your yucks? What are your yums? And like, what do you, what do you dislike and like, but in a way that frames it to where it's not intimidating. So I say like, Hey, can we, can we just talk about like what we want to get into tonight? And then it's like, oh, okay, that's, that, that sounds like a gift, right? That sounds mm-hmm. like a prize. It's not like something heavy. That's like bringing st- too much structure to the situation. Right. And then I usually ask someone, okay, so like, what are your yucks and what are your yums? Just so I know, like, um, and usually I'll start out with yums. Cause that's a positive place. And I'll be like, okay, I am into scratching. I am into name calling. I am into, um, a little bit of, you know, brat play, if you know what that is, sometimes they don't and I have to like explain things to them. And, you know, I'm usually the person who's like well-versed in a mm-hmm. lot of things. <laughs> um, and then you can find overlap in what you like and you just say like, Hey, okay. So what are your yums? Like, are you into any of this? And then they can, you know, say yes or no without you having to actively be in a situation where you feel like one self-conscious about something, you know, being vulnerable with this person saying like, here are my kinks kind of like, right. And two, you don't have to kind of revoke consent in the moment so much, which you totally have agency over the entire time. 
but it kind of puts it out there in under the pretense of like, this is where we're going to go. This is where we're not going to go. And this is what we're veering towards because it could be that, you know, I've had this come up to where, um, you know, certain personality traits were revealed to me. Like I said, one time I was hooking up with someone and they were like, I said, okay, well, can, can we just like establish some rules first? And they said, well, why do we need to have rules? And I was like, no, right. <laughs> like, this is, if you're doing this yeah. now, like, what are we going to get into before we start? So it kind of um, gives you like a, uh, an out if you need it. And it gives you a chance to deviate and to kind of curate the experience, uh, based on what they're expecting and based on what you were expecting. So it's just a form of a vibe check, essentially just ask people what their yucks and their yums are just open communication and create that, set that precedent early because it could be like, Oh yeah, I'm expecting anal. And it's like, I've never done that. And you don't know until you're in it. And no one mm-hmm. wants to be in that situation. Yeah. Mm. Let me tell you. So <laughs> when you're bent over and waiting and yeah. like, no one knows how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. I didn't move. bring any lube. Well, yeah. that's not mm-hmm. happening. Well. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, beautiful advice. I'm glad we ended yes. with that as well, because that was so perfect. Absolutely. Where can our listeners continue to connect with you after the episode? Yeah, you can head to my website, first and last name, Arielle Antwine, A-R-I-E-L-L-E-A-N-T-W-I-N-E.com. Um, I am pretty active on Instagram the most these days. And on Instagram, it is Sensual Education. So Sensual, like the French spelling, which is S-E-N-S-U-E-L-L-E dot education. And I also have a podcast by the same name, Sensual Podcast, where I interview women and femmes about how sex and sensuality are integral to life, work, and joy. And that will be coming back in the fall, probably. So depending on when this comes out, you can listen to it. But we have 11 episodes now that are full of advice and full of just, I'm really proud of it. (laughs) Just really great um, definitions and kind of coming at sexuality from the perspective of assuming that everyone who's listening is not an expert even me. Mm-hmm. And then I'll, you know, drop some nuggets in there that I call sensual gems, which are just backstory and context so that the listener doesn't have to look, look up whatever kink or the vocab right. word, mess up their search history <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better, mm-hmm. of a better analogy. And so you can just know and kind of come at these things from a place of confidence because we're all learning. Hope you guys are all naked now and feeling comfortable. <laughs> Hope the sound of our voices got you to strip down. Just after every five minutes, you're like, oh, yeah. And then it oh, took off another article. Getting hot? <laughs> no, it's just me. Just moi. Thank you so much to Ari for being on the episode today. You started so many good conversations for us and just like revamped the way I want to start looking at my body. And thank you so much to our listeners for tuning in. And if you have a few minutes, head on over to Apple Podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe to Honey Do Me. It means the world to us. If you leave a written review, we really will just love you for the rest of our lives and the rest of your lives because Mm -hmm. we're all cosmic beings and we exist forever. Anyways, if this is going to be the episode that gets you to leave a review, go ahead and leave your favorite body part at the end of it. You know, like the arms and like the, there's eyes and there's ears and there's a nose. Wow. I mean, if it's your butt, you could leave a peach. Like, you know, just, you can get, um, you can get crafty with it. Get crafty, get creative. This is all you. I want to give you all the freedom that you never had growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, There you go. (laughs) Cass has just relinquished all that for you. (laughs) So in, yeah, we'll see you. I was going to say enjoy, but you already listened. (laughs) Enjoy your week. See you later. Bye. Bye.